28 miles per hour. 29. Whoa. I better start slowing down. <laughs> Throttle only, guys. 24. 25. 26. Hello guys, this bike is pretty fast. So today's video is going to be about the Angway EP2 Pro. That's what this bike is here. It's a fairly new company out. Now they have two different versions of this bike. They have the EP2 and the EP2 Pro. There's a few things I want to mention in this video before we get started. And then we're going to do a very quick unboxing and show you guys what's involved in the assembly. And then we're going to hop on this bike, see what kind of speed we can get out of it and go through all different PAS levels to see what their speeds are. Then we're going to take it up some hills and test out the power of this bike. Now, the one thing I want to mention is when they sent me this bike, I was a little bit confused because the fenders were a little bit different on it. They were a little bit floppy and it didn't say pro on the bike, but they did confirm with me that this is the pro model that they did send me. However, the bikes that are shipped out now are coming with the metal fenders that are seen on their website and they do have the support brackets. So just keep that in mind throughout the video, guys. And another thing I wanna mention is right now, currently this bike's about $1,200 on their website and they have a coupon for 200 off, but they did provide me with a coupon for $250 off that you guys can take advantage of and get this bike for around $950. So make sure you take advantage of that coupon code and I'll leave it down below in the description of this video as well. Now they did send me this bike for free for testing and review, but we are gonna put it through its paces today and see what kind of power and speed this bike has and if it's worth the $950 that you can currently get it for with my coupon code. As always guys, I'll leave it down below in the description timestamps for any specific spot in the video that you guys wanna jump straight to. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what this bike can do. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you find this video interesting. Please leave a comment below and share this video. It really helps my channel out a lot. Let's get into it. Phew. All right guys, look at this thing. I'm unboxing the Angway and I'm really impressed with this packaging. Look at this. This whole bike is spray foamed in this box. That's crazy, but I wish every e-bike company would ship bikes like this because you know how much money that would save them in damages from having to replace parts that get bent up during shipping. I mean, that's pretty awesome there. For the little bit that it cost them to do each package like this, man, that probably saves them a ton. Let's get this thing out of the box and see what it takes to put it together. And then we're gonna hop on it and see what this baby can do. Look at all that foam. That was an amazing packing job. I got to give them credit for that. So good job on the packaging. The only thing you really have to assemble is the pedals. They give you those here in the box. They are pretty much like a plastic pedal out here. Pretty nice and metal on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and get those put on. And they do give you a nice tool kit here for adjusting your brakes, putting the pedals on and just adjusting things like that. So it is nice that they do give you a few tools in case you don't have a set. And then you also get the charger here, which is a 54.6 2 amp charger. All right, I got the pedals put on. Now all I gotta do is wipe down the rotors with some brake cleaner or some rubbing alcohol, go over all the nuts and bolts on the bike, make sure they're nice and tight make sure the brakes are lined up and adjusted good and one last thing you got to do is put air in your tires and these tires say to air up to 20 pounds so that's what i'm going to put in them to start out and this is my newest cordless tire inflator from bellet if you guys are interested i'll put a link down below this one had eight pounds in it so you definitely want to make sure you put air in there so you don't get any pinch flats all right guys so now let's take a look at the angway ep2 pro 20 inch folding fat tire e-bike. Up here on the handlebars, we have a set of hard rubber grips that do seem a little stiff, so I will be changing those out to a set of silicon foam grips like I did with my other bikes. On the left-hand side, we have the control pad for turning the bike on and adjusting your PAS levels from zero to three, all the way up to zero and nine if you change that in your display settings. Next to that, we have a nice little bell. It is cheap, but it does work. In the center is where we have the display panel, which shows you your speed, your PAS levels, and at the bottom you can toggle through your trip, your odometer, your max speed, and your average speed. 
Over on the right hand side, we have a half grip twist throttle with a seven speed Shimano thumb shifter next to that that leads down to the 14 to 28 freewheel. And it's using a Shimano derailleur to shift through the gears. Coming up the chain, we have the 48 tooth chain ring in the front with a set of pro wheel cranks and a nice set of folding pedals. For stopping power, the bike's using a set of non-branded brake levers coming down to a pair of Phalel brake calipers. I believe that's how you say it. And it's using a pair of 160 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear. To accommodate different rider sizes from five foot two to six foot four, the handlebar stem on the front is adjustable and they do give you a fairly long 33.9 millimeter diameter seat post, which allows you to adjust for those different sizes of riders. And my father-in-law at six foot six, 280 pounds, had no problems taking this on a 15 mile ride. One thing that's nice is the seat is fairly comfortable and it has a nice air hole in the center of the seat. I'll probably be keeping the seat on here, but what's odd is that there is a plastic shim in the seat post tube instead of a metal one. Now, one thing I really like about this bike is it's setting on a pair of 20 inch mag rims which limits your maintenance on having to adjust loose spokes over time. And it has a pair of 20 by four inch Chow Yang fat tires, which is great for traveling over loose sand or gravel. In addition to the little bit more comfortable ride that the four inch fat tires will give you, this bike does include a spring suspension in the front with a preload adjustment on the left and a lockout switch on the right. For power, this bike's using a 12.8 amp hour non-branded lithium battery that locks nicely into the frame so you can't see it and nobody can steal it and it's using an 18 amp controller to power the 750 watt hub motor in the rear of the bike now one thing i want to mention about this motor which you'll see in my rad test a little bit later on is that this motor didn't quite feel like a 750 watt nominal motor it felt more of like a 750 watt peak some of my 500 watt e-bikes felt like they might have had slightly a little bit more power than this, the ones that peak at 860, so I would say it's 750 watt max, not nominal. For safety, this bike's using a pretty nice bright light in the front and a rear tail light that acts as a brake light when you pull the brake lever, which is a nice safety feature to see on e-bikes. And last but not least, guys, this bike does come with a rear rack and also has a front and rear fender. However, keep in mind, like I said in the beginning of the video, they did confirm with me that this was an older version with the plastic fenders that didn't come down very far. The ones that are being shipped now should be metal fenders with support braces on the back of the fender going to the forks and down to the back of the frame. So there's all the details and specs of the Angway EP2 Pro. So now let's jump on this baby, take it for a spin and see what she'll do. So we're going to go through all the different PAS levels and see how fast this bike is in each level. So right now I'm in PAS level one and the speed is about six miles per hour. And one thing I want to note guys, is you can see here that the throttle is limited by whatever PAS level you're in. So full throttle in PAS one is only going to get you six miles per hour In PAS zero throttle does not work PAS two you'll see it'll get you a little bit faster. So the, if you want max out of your throttle, you have to be in PAS5. I really don't like that, and I wish they would have gave you full throttle in all the PAS levels because I like being able to hit that throttle anytime I want. If a dog would run out in front of you or after you, you can hit that throttle even if you were in PAS1 and take off. But instead, you have to sh shift all the way up to five to have full access to the throttle to take off. All right, so let's try PAS2. And I'm not really putting any effort into the pedals, I'm just rotating the cranks. So PAS2 will get you up to around 11 miles per hour. PAS3. will get you up to 15 miles per hour. PAS4. we 
will get you up to 20 miles per hour. And this is gonna be a max speed run here, guys. PAS5. Four, twenty-six. 26 I need a longer stretch guys I ran out of stretch Hey guys, I ran out of runway there, but if I had longer, straighter distance, I'm pretty sure I can get over 26. This bike is super fast when it comes to uh, it not being limited. I mean, it's not limited to a class two bike. It's crazy. It, come out like a, it came like that out of the box. And I asked them if, being that the fenders were different on this bike, if anything else was different, and they said no. So I'm assuming that all the models that are being shipped are gonna be like this. Now, one thing I do want to mention is it does take a while to get up to that speed, but for it to go past 20 miles per hour or even 22 miles per hour, that's pretty, pretty nice. So let's just do throttle only. Five. Six, twenty-seven. So, so twenty-seven, and I was still gaining. I never really felt the motor cut out at all. So I'm not quite sure this bike's even limited, but easily twenty-five miles per hour, easily with throttle war pedal assist. So this bike's really fast. I just wish they would have had the throttle full throttle no matter what PAS level you're in. Now another thing I want to mention is the PAS levels are really nice and smooth as far as when you pull out in PAS 1. This is one here and you'll see when I pull out. It's not really too jerky at all. It's real nice and slow. Now two is where you're going to feel it kick in a lot a lot more but up this little incline here with no problem and we're gonna go over and try it on some hills over here. All right guys, so now we're gonna try this hill out. I'm gonna start out in PAS5. That way I have full access of the throttle and we're gonna do throttle only and see how powerful this motor is going up this hill. That's about it. It's dying down pretty good, so I'm gonna start pedaling there. And it's bringing me up. Not too bad, but I don't feel like, honestly, in my opinion, I don't feel like this is any more powerful than my 500 watt bikes that are peaking at like 860. So I would say that the motor on this bike is probably about a 750 watt peak, not a 750 watt uh, nominal so keep that in mind guys uh, this is the 750 watt EP2 Pro version so in my opinion I would have liked to see the motor just slightly more powerful for it being rated as a 750 so let's go over here to the steeper or well it's not steeper but it's a lot longer of a hill and we're gonna test it out coming up that and see how it does but first Let's take it up this, uh, there's a little dirt hill over here. Let's see if I can make it up that. Because for a 750 watt motor, I would think it should make it right up it, no problem. I'm gonna stay in gear one here, so I have maximum uh, input on my pedal power. And let's see if we can make it up this little dirt hill here. Oh, 
barely, barely. Made it up it, but barely. And I was pedaling pretty hard, so. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to go up this long hill here, and we're going to do throttle only, see how far we can make it, and see how easy it takes me up that. Yeah, guys, it's dying down already. Let's see if we can make it to this fire hydrant. Uh... I mean, it's pulling me, but man, I would have expected a little bit more out of this motor for it being a 750 watt. Like I said, I feel like my 500 watt bikes have as much power as this. So like I said, this is probably rated 750 watts as the max. But you can see here with me pedaling, it's taking me up at no problem. So for most people, this is gonna be just fine. And I usually do help my 500 watt bikes up some hills. I usually do help pedal it for two reasons. One is because I like the exercise and two is it saves battery power and is healthier for the bike and the motor and the controller. All right, so let's just do some throttle only here and see how fast we can get it up to. Now this is just starting to incline here. I'm at 20 miles an hour. And the speedometer on the bike is pretty accurate. It pulled me up that little incline, no problem with just throttle. Let's see what we can get to here. This is just a slight downhill. So 27 miles an hour guys and I didn't even really feel the motor cut out on me at all. That's crazy. Really nice. Nice on the bumps. That front suspension is very nice. The seat's pretty nice and, and soft. It's not too bad. It's definitely softer than some of my other bikes factory seats I think a suspension seat post would really make this bike perfect as far as ride quality and smoothness goes so that's one thing I'll probably be updating on here is the suspension seat post and I'll leave a link down below in the description guys if you're interested in picking one of those up hey one more thing I wanted to show you about walk mode is this is walk mode if you hold the down button down but it's almost like a run mode because seven miles per hour that's pretty fast for walking i don't know if there's a way to adjust that down or not but if you were on a hill when you actually needed to use it it might be a little less but it, it does seem pretty fast for walk right, guys. now one thing i want to mention is this bike does have some pretty decent power once you get up and get going however starting out i don't know if it's set in the settings for a slow start but i don't think you can change it in here but it's not a lot of power at all initially right off the start so you can see here i'm holding the bike back very easily full throttle npas5 so i have max throttle and i can hold it back very very easily it's not until you start going a little bit that it actually takes off and picks up power pretty nice for people that are you know possibly older and not used to electric bikes so it won't take out from underneath them they'll just have to get going first the only thing is is if you were on a slight incline or something, it might not be ideal. So let's go over here and try it on an incline, a slight, I think it's about a 6% or 6 degree incline, and we'll see how well it does pulling out on that. All right, guys, I'm at the bottom of this little sidewalk here, and we're going to see how the motor does with that. Yeah, see, guys, just throttle. It's barely taking me up it, but as soon as I start pedaling, that motor starts going. It does give me the power to get up it. It's just not going to be a tremendous amount of power out of the hole so don't expect this thing to be a speed demon right away or super powerful but overall it's very fast and it does have some decent power once you get going now let's talk about some of the settings here that you can change 
I don't know all the settings right off the bat, but I do know of a few that you can change. Let me get my cell phone out of the way here. All right guys, so now to change some of the settings, you can hold the positive and negative down on your controller and TC is gonna be your trip clear. So if you press the info button here, you have yes or no to clear the trip. I'm not gonna clear it. BL is backlight, so you could change that for the brightness of your backlight. And then you have unit, which is your miles and kilometers. So those are your basic settings. Then if you hold down the plus and minus again, while you're in this mode, that takes you to the customizable settings. You can see here is your voltage. So you can adjust what your voltage display every time you have, uh, I believe it's five different levels of battery voltage here that it displays and you can adjust what each level shows so once it gets down to one bar here it's showing that it'll say it'll read 40 volts you can adjust that um, two would be 44.5 and so on and so forth so let's go out of that menu uh, sca let's go into there that's where you could change your pedal assist levels mine came factory set on zero to five you could change that all the way from zero to three up to zero to nine so you can actually give this bike nine levels of assist if you want or three or seven so whatever's most comfortable for you whatever you prefer if you want a lot of different ranges go ahead and select nine if you want fewer ranges select three and then once you select uh i'm going to stay at zero to five once you select that you can actually adjust your levels of each pas level so you can see here one is 20 percent power uh, PAS 2 will be 35, 3 would be 45, and so on. And my 5 was not at 100, but I did change it to 100 so that I get max out of that. So that's really, really nice that they allow you to change these different PAS levels to suit your need because, uh, you know, some older riders want, might want a slower start on some of the lower levels. Or if you're riding with somebody that either doesn't have an electric bike or has one that is not as adjustable as this, you can go in there and match some of their speeds uh, even a different brand bike you can go in there and match some of their pas levels so if you're riding you can ride side by side with them say on a bike trail or whatnot and it's not a constant forward and back so that's very very nice that they do let you change these settings then you have your current mine's set at 20 i'm not going to mess with that you have your pedal assist set the forward you don't want to change that um, that's your magnets i wouldn't mess with any of that a lot of these other settings i'm not quite sure what they are yet guys so i'm gonna have to dig into that and figure it out um hand h h and d now that's your throttle here on the hand grip i didn't notice any changes in settings i was trying to get it so that i had full power in all the different pas levels but i didn't see a way to change that it didn't seem like it made a difference when i changed this except when I selected yes here, it basically almost disabled the throttle, but still allowed me to go six miles per hour in all the different levels. So not quite sure exactly what the deal with that is, why they would allow you to do that. Um, some system settings here. That's a, I believe that's a delayed start. Um, I think, yeah, you can change that. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. I think that's your, um, when you're pushing a bike like walk mode i believe that's what that setting is or no maybe this is the slow start i think this is the slow start setting but it's locked in at four you can't change that um let's see what else password you can put a password in here if you want so when you power your bike on you have to input a password before it will allow you to actually uh turn on the bike and use it now with my bike the key does go in the bottom underneath here and you can see I don't have a key in there. With my bike, the key did not have to be in it for the power to work on the battery. However, I did see where some people said the key did need to work with them. So maybe that's just a design, you know, a different manufacturer of the batteries that they had to get because batteries are very hard to get right now. But that is a 12.8 amp hour battery in there. And I do want to mention guys, a lot of you guys are subscribers of mine because of the electric XP. That battery is confirmed that it will work in the original electric XP bike. Not the step through, but the original. I put it in mine and it worked fine. Yeah, guys, overall, uh, there it is. There's the test ride on it. I think it did great as far as the speed and just overall. 
a um, little lacking in the power for it being a 750 watt motor but overall i think if you guys can pick one of these up for around 950 bucks especially if you get the other fenders like they said comes with them i think it's a pretty good deal all right guys that's gonna be it i hope you guys found this video enjoyable and helpful make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and don't forget to take advantage of the 250 dollars off coupon code i believe it's good till the end of uh september i believe so it does expire so if you guys are interested in one of these make sure you guys do take advantage of that and one thing i want to mention is they do i know i said in the beginning of the video they make two models of this bike well they also make a third version called the engine pro now what's different about the engine pro is that it has regenerative braking not sure about the motor capabilities or the power of that bike because i don't have it to compare but just something to keep in mind guys thanks for watching